If you're like me and love experimenting with free professional tools to enhance your workflow, you're in the right place. Today we're diving into how Google Drawings can be used to create flow charts for your folder structures, mapping out character arcs, developing your stories, or even designing reference board for your 3D characters. I use this tool almost daily, so I'm really excited to show you how I use it every day. There are of course great paid options for this, like Lucidchart, Miro, or Concept Board, but I like to explore the free landscape and see what's out there. Stick around to see what you can do without spending a penny. The first thing you want to do is head over to Google Drive. So right click and create a new Google Drawing. Let's rename this to the date of today, which is 2024. November 10th underscore this will be my folder structure flowchart underscore version 1 I like to save everything as increments because I often do revisions on my stuff under file page setup you can change your aspect ratio here doesn't really matter because we will expand the canvas anyways but it's a habit I have Next, we will right click on the canvas and change our background color. I think white is too bright, so I often do the lightest gray instead. I think it's called light gray free. So one thing that's very unfortunate with Google Drawings is that you can't very easily navigate around the canvas. So you have to use this horizontal scroll in the browser window. So to overcome this issue, we're going to download a free plugin for Google Chrome called Scroll Anywhere. And it's completely free, so I'll put the download link down below. So head over to the download page and hit install to Chrome over here. Once you've installed it, head over to the settings for the plugin. This is of course up to preference, but I like to do right button. Whenever you hold control, this will be active. Finally, I'm going to select grab and drag like on a smartphone. And once again, all up to taste. You can change this around however you prefer. I'm going to save and exit. And now when we hold down control, we can zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. And also holding control, I can hold the right mouse button to navigate around the canvas very quickly. So continuing with our flow chart. Up here, you have text tools. So I'm going to start by typing out the title for the document. Over here, you can change the font. You have the ability to add more fonts over on the top of the menu. So I'm going to select Open Sans. Besides having the regular snap to the middle of the canvas, you can also right click and hit center on page horizontally that will center the object, the active object, to the center of the page. This works for groups as well. Next, we're going to create a shape. This will be the first node in our node tree. Preference, once again, I'm going to delete the borders. If you pay close attention, you can see a small yellow diamond up here in the corner. If you press and hold it, you can increase or decrease the corner radius of your a selected shape. Next I'm going to change its color. Finally I'm going to add the first name of my folder structure and this is typically the root folder. I'm also going to change the font and the font color. Perfect! Now we have our first node in our node tree. By holding down control and dragging out from the shape to create a duplicate of it. Holding down control and shift while dragging out from the shape will duplicate it on a specific axis so the vertical or horizontal axis I'm going to rename these nodes symbolizing folders in my folder structure the font is a bit too big selecting multiple objects and then decreasing the font size to visually show that these nodes are connected I'm going to use an elbow connector so it's very easy just drag out from the outputs of the nodes then I'm going to change the end shape of my line to an arrow and I'm going to connect the other two. And now we have the beginning of our node tree. Create new nodes 
for the folders underneath. So in my project folder, for example, I will have a folder for each software. In the pre-production folder, I will have folders for the documents, the mood board for my project, a storyboard. As you can probably see by now, we've reached the edge of our canvas. Zoom out using control. You will see this small triangle appear in the corner, which we can use to expand the size of our canvas. You don't have to move the objects one by one. You can instead hold down control plus A to select everything in your document. Then you could either move it or right click and center on the page. Nice, let's keep working. So let's keep connecting the nodes. You can of course go either way here. So you could start at a lower node and connect it to one of the top folders instead to show that they're perhaps linked or something. Totally up to whatever projects you're designing. I like to illustrate links with a dotted line. If you don't want the lines to overlap when using the elbow connector, you can select a line and you will once again see the small yellow uh, diamond appear. You can press and hold it to move the line around. Like so. I'm going to undo this by holding Ctrl Z. One of the nice things with working in the Google environment, I can very easily access all my images I store on the Google Drive. You could add your reference images, your mood boards, or in my example here, I will add my logo. Then I'm going to group all this by using a background shape. If you want to create several flowcharts in the same document, for example, you can group objects by holding Ctrl Alt plus G to move them with one button click. Here I'm just showing you how the curved connectors look. You also have a ruler. You also have the ability to not only snap to the guides, the horizontal and vertical guides for example. You can also use a grid to move uh, things incrementally instead. I prefer guides though. If you're working in a team, you can head over to the share button, change the access type or invite members, and then copy the link and send it to your colleagues or friends. Once they're in the project, they could right click on a node or a object, for example, and hit comment to add their thoughts, perhaps the uh, flow of this specific folder isn't quite correct. Perhaps this folder instead should be a budget folder. They can type their comments here and you can reply. You also have the ability to scribble on your document if you want to highlight things or uh, be extra clear about something. If you're feeling a bit creative, you can add uh, GIFs or stickers to your document. The animations will of course not follow if you uh, intend to print this. One thing I like to do is to create a small link to this board. So I'm going to type in link to board and then paste the uh, URL for this Google Drawings board. People can still click on the board and access this interactive board instead or to collaborate. Very nice. So let's download this as a PDF. And here you can see the link to our document. So that was my introduction to Google Drawings. For this, I've used Lucidchart, Miro, and just recently Concept Board. And so far, I haven't found any features that I miss by using Google Drawings instead, completely for free. So if you're like me and like to try out new free alternatives, I suggest giving Google Drawings a go. Let me know down below if you have any features that you use in the uh, paid alternatives that you're wondering if there's, a, if there's an alternative in Google Drawings or the Google ecosystem. 
and it, will, and it would be a lot of fun to check it out and see if I can find anything. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.